Oh, it's a, what, is something moving over there? Are you scared? No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, guys, we're out here at the farm. We're about to sight in the 22. Uh, prior to turning the camera on, we did take a couple of shots. And uh, for me, it seemed to be right on. For Nate, it seemed to kind of be, well, let's just say a little off. First thing we gotta do is go check on, hang on here folks, here we go. First thing we gotta do is go check on our hunting blind. Uh, the water level is way up out here. And just looking down here, my tent, my blind might be gone. Oh boy, well water is way up, have a look at this. As you can see the water was way up at one point, and no that's not the river there, the river's over here. And it's moving pretty fast. Also, judging from the amount of mud and water back here, I'm not gonna get to my blind. Hopefully it's still sitting there. If not, I'm out about 150 bucks, but that water is just moving. All right, so the plan for today, I guess I should let you know what that is. We're just gonna come over here and sight the rifle in, check this corn. Uh, I forgot to bring some more with me so we don't have any corn to put out, but I'm going to check and see what's going on over there. And when we get back home, Nate's gotten tired of the camel pattern on the pew pew or biscuit sender, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to camel that up with some paint. And I'll show you how I do that as well. I guess I better get back up to the top here. Nate's probably anxious to do some more shooting. My hands are froze already. And we're supposed to get another six inches of snow tonight. So that's not going to go over very well either. All right guys, so we have target set up down here. It's about 50 yards. We've shot at it already. It seems to be pretty close. Uh, Nate's gonna give it another shot and see what happens. So the key to sighting in a rifle is a steady platform. The first time we took a shot, Nate was shooting. He wasn't, he was just standing and holding the free hand. You put the rifle on a steady rest. It makes it a lot easier to see where you're at. So initially, there was four holes in the center target. I now see five. So right out of the box, we're sitting at about maybe 45, 50 yards. They seem to be pretty good right there. I don't think we're gonna mess around with that at all. all right, guys, we moved back at 100. It's a little iffy back there, but Nate's gonna shoot down there and see what happens. Okay, so Nate sent six biscuits down here. There was already five holes in the center target, so let's see how he did. So what appear, Nate was low and left. So I'm gonna go back, try the same thing with five shots. Uh, this, this platform we're shooting off is the back of my truck, so it's not the steadiest, but we'll see if we can make it work. I should also let you know that's not the most expensive scope out there. Uh, I only paid 30 bucks for that scope, so it's obviously not the most expensive scope out there. But we'll see what it did at 100 yards. Well, there you have it. The same five are still in there. So it would appear I'm low and left as well. All right, so at 100 yards, Nate and I are both in the same spot. It's low and left, so it tells me we got to bring it over and up. Problem is, we are freezing. So this is gonna have to wait till next time. So the adjustment's gonna have to wait till next time. So there's a couple things we can do to improve this. Obviously, we're shooting off the back of my truck here, but uh, a bipod and practice. You can't beat practice. 
The bipod will help steady the front of the gun. You're at the rear, so that's your responsibility. All right, guys, that's going to do it for shooting. Like I said, if we had a bipod on there, which may come in the future, and a little better shooting platform, we can fix that low and left. So we are both freezing. So we're going to head home, and I'm going to show you how to camo your gun for less than 10 bucks. We made it back in out of the cold. It's freezing. Now, normally I would paint this gun in the shop, but I don't have the heat on. The trick to doing it in the house is don't get caught. Because the minute she smells this paint, it's going to be to the curb with me. So let's get this done before she even realizes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the entire gun with this camo tan. Then I'm going to go over with some drab green and maybe hit it with a little bit of black. After this is solid color on the gun, I'm going to go get some pieces off of my duck blind. You'll see, I'll show you. guys here we are I tried to put it's a little dark stand by all right guys I tried to put uh, a coat of paint on here to add, actually break it up a little bit uh, one thing I will say I was gonna blame Canadian Tire and I think I did but I'm gonna blame Rust-Oleum Rust-Oleum this is not camouflage green or OD green it's barely even green so I sprayed a little bit of that on there and then thought that's no good at all. I also put some black on there. I'm going to show you in a second, but that didn't work out. Then went and got some flat brown, which will fit in nicely where we hunt. And after I bought that and actually cut myself out some edges, Nate decided he prefers just the camo tan. So I'm going to take some tape off here. And I'm going to show you what we ended up with. All right, guys, so here it is. So the masking job on this rifle was not the best and it was actually on purpose what Nate wants I guess is he wants the wearing of it so this has got the fresh paint on both sides it's got some paint missing here and there but he wants the wearing of it so here we're here on the pad where your cheek could go he wants that wore down a little bit so to finish this off I would just take a little bit of steel wool or a dry sponge and where your hands would go, just scuff it up a little bit, scuff a little bit up on here. And basically, that's all he wants. Or, again, you can get some leaves and get whatever, some branches and or whatever else you have around the house for vegetation. Put it on your gun and spray paint it. Now, I did try that with a couple things I had, but it's midwinter here in Ontario. Leaves are kind of hard to come by. So, it didn't work out. And don't worry about if it doesn't work out. You just hit it over again with some paint. And you're right back at it again so you start over fresh so that's all that's left to do on this rifle here is we're going to put a little bit of oh boy that's all that's left to do on this rifle here going to scuff this up a little bit and he'll be good to go just make sure you tape up some of the uh important parts on here so like the action now this gun here does need a serious cleaning so i wasn't overly concerned about it but there you have it. Guess we really didn't camo this gun. We painted a tan and that's what he likes. So that's where it stays. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you all in the next one. Later.